Next up, using psychology and NFTs to build successful DAOs. So this is another panel discussion. We've got Joel Alexander, oh sorry. We've got Rasmus Hagfist and Aaron PYS.eth and Altac Unsol. So welcome to the stage. <laughs> Have you guys got mics? <laughs> Comfortable shares. Yes. Oh, I like this. Good. It's very nice. Hello. Hello. Yep. Okay. So, in, in true DAO fashion, I think we're going to have this panel without a moderator. So let's uh, <laughs> speak as we wish. Yeah. And also, in true Web3, Metaverse, De DeFi, crypto fashion, I'm not the person exactly. there, right? Exactly. So, yeah. So, thank you, Joanna, for, for joining us. Of course. Uh, we, it was actually a panel of four to have dropped out. It was just going to be a fireside chat, me and you, Rasmus. Yeah. <laughs> for, for Joanna. And I decided to break that model. Yeah. We've added yeah. some, some intelligence to the panel. <laughs> um, okay, so I think it's, it's, the, it's a DAO's track, so any, uh, most of, of you here have been listening over and over what a, what a, what a DAO is. But I think, just speaking f um, with both of you um, a while ago, Everyone seems to have a different concept of what a DAO is. Um, and the thing is, with, with each, each model that people present, there are legal and regulatory issues as well, things which are, um, which are obstacles to the DAO running successfully. So I think, Joanna, if I can start with you, in, in your mind, what is a DAO? And what is the best, the, the best model or, or best models to use so that, so that a DAO can not only launch successfully, but also be, be sustainable in the long term? Great question. Thank you, Aaron. Um, a little bit about myself, because you don't even know my name. Uh, I'm not there. So I'm Yana Surpatanu. Uh, my background is in traditional finance. I used to work at Citigroup doing crypto within Citigroup. I then moved on to a fully fledged DeFi crypto career, and I'm now uh, fully embarked in a portfolio career. Basically, I'm working with a multitude of projects at the intersection of Web3, Metaverse, um, and DeFi. Um, and to start answering your question, I'm gonna uh, pass some stuff over to you, so don't worry, I'm not gonna monopolize the conversation. Um, I look, I think of DAOs holistically, right? So we're, we're all here talking about NFTs and the Metaverse and, and Web3. So to me, this whole ecosystem represents a permissional, permissionless, open, virtual economic system, uh, and NFT, NFTs represent the ownership tools for it. And I believe that this new revolutionary novel ecosystem will be powered by a new form of company and uh, coordination mechanics in the form of DAO. So this is what DAOs represent to me. They're a part of this novel ecosystem we're creating and they represent a, a new mechanism of coordination, a new form of a company enabled only through, through the tools that crypto has offered us. Um, I have actually worked uh, in a DAO as a CSO uh, in a DAO, which may sound counterintuitive, right? Because why would you have hierarchy uh, in a DAO? But the reality from the theoretical uh, standpoint when it comes to a DAO to actual implementation, so there's a huge gap there. So I was part of a DAO for over a year and a half, uh, and I'm currently pushing one of the projects that I work with, uh, Swash, to become a DAO. So simplistically put, or at a base layer type of definition, a DAO is a form of a decentralized organizational structure that you have to reach or make sense to implement when you have a strong community that has a common incentive mechanism to either gain directly from being part of that DAO project and also to help the project grow. So basically, you as a user of the project are also an owner of the project and you are given, given the uh, access point into helping the project grow and develop the way you see fit. So again, to simply define a DAO, I believe that you first of all need to have a very strong community, design the correct incentive mechanism, material or otherwise. I mean, sometimes engineers or developers are attracted by a project just because they can help build it according to how they see fit, and that's not possible in traditional environments. So incentive mechanism, strong community, and the willingness to, at one point, transfer your treasury and your earnings to the community. Because that, what, that's what a DAO means, uh, essentially. You 
have sufficient power in the community that you leave the future of the project and the treasury themselves in the power in, in the hands of the community. But we're very far from that mo uh, model in terms of implementation. Hope that's uh, a good starting point. Over to you to add stuff if you need to. Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Rasmus. Uh, I work as a psychology strategist, you could say. I spent my last uh, five, six months uh, working at Dow Jones. I ran all of their um, global Web3 initiatives and uh, uh, D-O-W, not D-A-O jo <laughs> Jones. That's actually a Dow. Uh, um, and I spent a lot of time looking at different DAO structures, seeing what, uh, what, where everything is going. And I, I, I try to be as pragmatic as possible about DAOs, because realistically, we're, we're, not, we're not there in the, in the way people usually think about it ideologically. So for example, think about what companies' cultures, what's happening in company cultures right now. Companies are trying to bring in their communities. They're trying to engage people. They need to focus more on company culture and making sure everyone's happy. Uh, it's, it's happening all over. It's what people are being taught now in management sciences. Uh, I'm a psychology student myself. And uh, it, it's just moving towards a more fair system. And, and that's what companies are trying to be at the moment. They're trying to be sort of a... Um, a stepping stone from what they used to be now, they're trying to move over to what we really envision with DAOs. So I think very interestingly that DAOs allow as a, as a, as a step between communities and official um, structured companies. And that's gonna be a very interesting way, for example, for, um, uh, for, uh, for hiring, for scoping new talent. It's gonna be an interesting way for new uh, economic incentives to be engaged within a company and, and get, you know, get engagement there and maybe get a higher stake in terms of, okay, I, I'm engaged, I'm, 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 I'm invested in this, I like this company, this is how I can get involved as a starting point. I think that's really an interesting point that, well, I think this is what, I think, really think this is what DAOs will be. I think this is the. I think it's this first logical step that's practically practically going to happen as a as a stepping stone between communities. And, and as you said, DAOs need active communities. And I think that's why we're going to see this happen first with established already. I know this is boring because now I'm talking about traditional Web two stuff, and everyone's like, oh fuck. Uh, <laughs> but literally, the big corps they already have their followers, they're, they're slaves, so to speak, everyone who prices them. They go to every community event, they try, I mean, look at every university, they're, they're flocking around all the big uh, consulting firms, they flock around everything trying to get a hold of it, you know, graduate schemes and everything. Imagine, imagine the power of using a DAO to just capture your community and implementing it. You don't need to replace Dow Jones with a DAO. That, why, why would you do that? <laughs> they, they, it works. They, it works as it works. Um, but I think I think this is the first logical step. And, but do you think that it's it's that's the only thing that's happening? Just trying to move away from the more hierarchical structures to a fully democratic structure. Is that it, or are we looking more decentralized? Something which I want to touch upon. The mm -hmm. the the D clearly stands for decentralized for decentralized. Yeah. But what does decentralized mean? Does it mean that you have a thousand, ten thousand, a million token holders or NFT holders? But are those ten thousand token holders in one country, or are they? Do they need to be spread out over multiple countries for it to be truly decentralized? What What is it that we sometimes? Sometimes I I think we need to break it down into first principles and and think. Okay, but what is it that we're doing? We we can already see the SEC. With, with Ethereum, when they've transitioned to the proof of stake, to, to proof of stake yeah. they're saying, okay, but now it's not decentralized. Mm. Because mm. The, the, biggest, the biggest stakers who are securing the network are based, all of them are based in the US. Mm. So this is a US project, and now I want to regulate it. Mm. Mm. So is, isn't the decentralization, the, at least for me, the critical yeah. element in a DAO where you are not you're not based by definition, you're not based anywhere. But that doesn't mean only a lot of people having a vote or a right or democratically being able to, to, to participate. Mm. Or are we talking about you can't control this because we're everywhere but we're nowhere at the same time? 
I think this is a really interesting question. I think, I think as a first principle, as an organization, that's why I was talking about earlier, but let's, go to, let's talk about decentralization because I think this is a buzzword that you don't really think about the true meaning. What does decentralization mean? It means you're moving away from something that's grouped together, right? And there are several facets or levels to how you can decentralize something. Everyone knows this already because if you if you if you work ever worked in HR or if you've ever worked in recruitment, um, um, it's it's you have to focus on getting a wide spread of talent. You have to understand that you want to limit bias, and what you do that is by getting different cultures, ethnicities, mindsets, everything, and and geographical decentralization is one facet that it's really easy to implement, which directly allows you to tap into our human nature and, and just getting rid of as many biases as possible. That's the first yeah. step. Absolutely. And, 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 and trying to, to remain on topic and yeah, not digressing with the psychology. No, but I, I want to intervene on some of the stuff. Okay. Yeah, go Especially for it. on oh, the yeah, regulatory yeah. stuff. I mean, regulators are always, and supervisors, they're always going to interpret rules in a way that uh, still gives them the control and the power, right? With Ethereum, it was more around like the node operators and uh, yeah, right? So who's part of the network and who's an identifiable part of the network? And the reason why they're able to identify them is because they're CFI entities, correct? Who are also part of the Ethereum network. So let's not kid ourselves. The regulators will also always try to interpret everything in a way that still gives them full control yeah. over everything that's happening. So Absolutely. yeah, we're, we're gonna be in a continuous battle with them. I loved your question, and it's a really good point. I mean, this, I, I think about decentralization, firstly, from a technical uh, perspective, and we had the presentation before um, getting into the gist of that, so I'm not gonna re repeat what was already said. Jurisdictionally speaking, I mean, as far as I know, there's only one jurisdiction globally that allows for DAOs to be recognized as legal entities, and that's Switzerland. So, I mean, DAOs operate out of Switzerland as a legally recognizable format. So by default, if we think about the geographical component, you know, it's not really a decentralized uh, organization. But I think it's, it more has to do with involving the community and diminishing the power that the founders, for instance, have, or like the central authority that was part of the creation of that project. Yeah. That's in theory, because in reality, that only happens in tier one DAOs such as Maker, and you probably are aware with what's happening in, in Maker right now in terms of ideological um, frictions. Uh, also Aave and, uh, and other entities that are known to have a fully fledged operational DAOs. In, in the tiers below, I think there's a struggle to, um, so the concept is there. Everyone wants to create a DAO because it's trendy, because it's, it's what pre people who are in crypto are supposed to do. But the reality is that the communities are not consolidated enough to make that DAO functional, right? And like I said, what DAOs do you actually know, aside from the tier, ones one, tier one ones that are free and comfortable delegating or, or giving treasury decisions to their community? And there aren't many, why? Because we don't have digital identity, we don't have decentralized reputation. We cannot, as a DAO, hire people whom we don't know because there's no on-chain track record of either their activity or, or their ability. So I think a next step in, when it comes to operational models for DAOs is to create certification of knowledge for something. So if you as a developer contribute to a data union DAO, for instance, then you might be issued an NFT certificate stating that, hey, I was a contributor there for uh, over a year. And then another DAO that is specializing in data unions or Web3 data monetization can use that NFT as a way to certify that you have some experience in that field, right? Sorry, I, I kind of uh, uh, expanded that's, that's from fine. your original question. Yeah, but uh, so... And, and going back to your point on the treatment, the fact that you can set up a DAO that's going to be treated as a legal entity in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. For me, and, and apologies to everyone if I'm a bit of a purist on this point, but um, you said what's decentralization? And I think the simplest definition is there isn't one sole point of failure. That is, that is when you start to become decentralized. The minute you have a legal entity, 
then you know that the authorities can clamp down on that legal entity and you, you have trouble, going back to the, the point of the, the, the topic here about creating a successful DAO. So I think, actually, I, I never introduced myself with, with, uh, at the beginning. So I'm a, I'm a Web3 lawyer in, in Gibraltar, and we've set up several foundations for, for DAOs. And the, but the way that we set them up, there's, there's a comp the, there isn't a direct link between the foundation and the DAO, the decentralized protocol. So the foundation is set up for the benefit of the DAO, for the benefit of the protocol, but it does not control the protocol and the protocol does not control the foundation, which means that the DAO will, using snapshots, whatever, whatever tools there are out there, will have, there'll be proposals and they'll vote on the proposals. If there's something that needs to be effected in the real world, then it will request for the foundation to effect the will of the, of the DAO. Now, the foundation acts on its own account and says, is this good or bad for the DAO? And also, is it legal? So there's a, there's a control there. Mm -hmm. But if the foundation fails or it does something wrong, the DAO doesn't fail. And that's where I see is the, is the critical element on, 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 on how to structure. I, f and another example, so we're here in the UK. If you set up a DAO where there's a thousand, a thousand members, the a thousand members are in the UK, then it starts looking like a UK partnership. And in law, it might be treated as such. So you want to, it goes back to the point that we raised earlier about okay. it's not only decentralization by way of numbers, it's by way of geographical location, I feel as well. I agree with your point, and I'm also a purist. I think that it is important at one stage to have some legal structuring around DAOs, and that is to protect the community. So if we are looking at a scaled up environment and people who are putting a lot of capital to be a part of a DAO, then there needs to be some sort of basic layer of protection for them. So that's why I think uh, it, it is relevant. Um, and yeah, I'm actually gonna try out an experiment. I'm creating a female-led Web3 advocacy group in the EU, and I'm gonna go through the hurdles of, of registering that as a DAO at EU level. So I wanna bypass the national laws and, and create that. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Hopefully I'm still free next year. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I think um, something to, to, that's quite interesting. When we look at voting, uh, from from uh, going back to psychologists because this is my fav favorite part. But uh, <laughs> but in terms of voting in a DAO, I think what's really underestimated in terms of looking at how to set up uh, voting structures is looking at um, political science, looking at how countries are run, looking at how con uh, how companies now, especially big big corps, are trying to move towards a structure which is almost like they're trying to become their own small. Uh, countries in their own sense, creating their own communities, creating their own rules, their own lands, um, creating, uh, having their virtual realities where they can have their, basically their own territory. They're, what's the difference between a company and a state? Well, a state can hold physical land. If you have a, met, if you have a, a land in a metaverse and it's yours and you run it, boom, you're, you're a virtual state by, by effect. And I think what's interesting in, uh, with DAOs is, is that we, if, we, if we look towards politics and we look how it's run, we can see a time-tested indication of, of what works in terms of how to engage people to vote and how to structure people because at the end of the day, as much as we want to use... See, I'm a very pragmatic guy. You see, I'm not a purist like this. I, I'm sorry. Sorry if I, I'm, I'm saying counter things, but I you know, want to give perspective. We're offended. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I want to give some um, perspective that we have hundreds, thousands of years of of log data that how we can organize as people, just looking at history of how countries are run. And I think, I think it's very valuable, and I think also just looking at company structures and how companies have been run, and how they've succeeded, I think drawing from both sides is very, very powerful, and I think, I think it should not be underestimated when you decide of how you wanna set up your DAO and how you wanna set up your uh, voting structures. Just from a purist or yeah. a quasi-purist. I just wanna quasi. <laughs> add something. I think you're talking mostly about Western culture. Look at UAE. I think there you see a perfect combination of a company and the state operating together. So the UAE is operating as a company, basically. 
that's what they do. So they encourage risk taking, they uh, invest in founders, the, the, that segregation, it's a country, country of owners who own the country and own the companies in the country. So again, I think there are various types of models, but I actually do agree with politics, but in reverse. I used to be in the European Parliament in my early days, and that's where I learned network effects from working in a political organization. So I do agree with that. I think it's there, it's in the physical world. We just need to capture it, better it, and then implement it uh, in our Web3 environment. Absolutely, I mean, uh, looking at how much you value democracy and figuring out what, what structure works for you. So if you wanna have less democracy, work away your thing from away from democracy in the way that you can incorporate more of a ownership kind of thing if you want to implement something that's going to look something more like UAE or if you want to if you're a pure ideologist in the sense of the pure democracy everyone has a it's then yeah, one vote system boom sold bound tokens you KYC everyone done it's, it's it, it, you try to recreate as perfectly as possible a, a democratic system mm -hmm. uh, but if that's not your interest then then go ahead towards something else. What do you think, Aaron, about this discussion? Yeah, come on. Uh, I was thinking about the next question, actually. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, what, what I was thinking is, we, we've, so we've, very important on the, on the participation um, of the community and how, how we incentivize that. Mm. Uh, because going back to decentralization, again, it's not all about numbers. Um, if you have a very large community in numbers, but only a very small percentage are, are active and are actively voting on proposals, then, again, the decentralization gets lost to, to a very large extent. And it's also the case where you have big holders of NFTs or big holders of tokens, big bag holders, and they have a disproportionate uh, amount of influence on, 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 on proposals that, that get voted on. To that, I would say really simply, the, the function of a state is to scare and, and effectively punish their people. So I think you can do incentive structures that reward people. We can't underestimate the power of actually having a valuable asset which the DAO controls, which you don't want to lose. In the same way, you don't want to lose your civil rights in a country, and that's why you vote there. And I think it's something that's not sexy to talk about, but it's there. Yeah, but I mean, it's harder to freeze assets on the blockchain as a DAO, right? Uh, you, you, it's harder to freeze the governance assets, either governance tokens or NFTs. Um, I think, you know, we have to get used to the fact that communities are lethargic. And unless, like I said, there's a clear incentive mechan mechanic happening, right? Like a clear, well-designed incentive mechanism, they're going to become lethargic. And from experience, and from experience in human nature and psychology, which is your uh, area of expertise, people are most incentivized by capital and by the idea of making money. Throw a valuable ideological component to that, you have them hooked. Of course, there are going to be periods of ups and downs, right? But you need to ultimately show them what the benefit, what the clear benefit of being part of, of that community is. So, Excellent. on that so we're done. cheerful note. Thank you, everyone. Well, to end it. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well done. <laughs> Thanks very much.